Hello, today we're going to look at what you can do in your code to make sure that it's not absolutely chugging and ruining your frames and making your games really slow. So we're going to look at how you can kind of organize and arrange your code and just some more broad concepts and things that you probably should be doing if you're not doing basically stuff that makes games really annoying. Because I don't know if you've ever played uh, a lot of the new modern games with high graphics as you move into new areas and stuff, you'll notice that you just you just freeze for like half a second it's kind of frustrating and it seems to be the way the game's built it doesn't seem to be anything to do with your computer because you'll even hear like streamers that are just completely maxed out computers playing like player unknowns battlegrounds and they'll just get huge frame hiccups just want to point out some things you can look out for to make sure your games run fast all right so one of the main things one of the first things that comes to mind here is just the stuff you're doing in the core main loop of your game because of course if you have a game somewhere in there there's something like uh while running i'm just putting while one here and then you have all the stuff your game does typically this will be like update game state render and then there's usually something that's like check input. There's a lot of little tricks here and a lot of things to watch out for. Most of the time, this core while loop will run in a single thread. When you're updating this game state, sometimes you'll kind of get stuck on some really long thing that it just chugs on. And it'll delay the render, you'll end up getting like one, two frames per second, and it makes the game unplayable, basically, if you're getting that low of frames. What can we do, do to avoid having a bunch of things pile up on this game state? All right, so let's talk about a few things here. First of all, you can definitely async the tasks that be delayed. I'm pretty guilty of, of basically hardly ever using this, so this is something I personally could improve on, is just learning how to do this async stuff a little better. Next thing you can do that I think is super necessary is you can put things in a queue and basically process them one at a time. Okay, so if you have a queue, you basically pile things onto the back of it and process things from the front of it. So if you have a lot of things potentially happening all at the same time, you can basically make a full queue of everything and then process one thing per frame rather than trying to do the everything in, in one frame and potentially locking up your game. You can say, hey, just add it to the queue of things that need to be done. And you can also even delay this further and say, hey, we got a delayed queue. Uh, we process one of these every half second. These are the things that also are not super critical to the immediate response. Although things usually in this queue will feel like they're immediately responsive because they still end up happening pretty quick. It's just a way to make sure you're not trying to do everything all at once and locking up your game on a thread. So yeah, just make a queue of things that need to be done and let the queue be uh, absorbed basically. I was trying to think of where I originally kind of learned this and sure I learned some in school, but also there is this book called Game Programming Patterns by Robert uh, Nystrom and it's free. There's an online PDF version or web page version. It's totally free. I'll link it below. You can also buy the book off Amazon if you want the full physical thing that helps support Mr. Robert who made this awesome book. This book is highly recommended if you're a game developer. It just has so many little tips and tricks and it does talk about this thing I'm talking about. I was feeling like I read this somewhere. I couldn't remember where so I went to my bookshelf and sure enough it is called the event queue. This is often used for the UI or you know, just interface stuff that's not super critical to the logic of the game, but it's really nice to know as soon as you can. Yeah, you just put it in an event queue. Having this book handy to, to read when you're bored or, you know, on a trip or something is super awesome. I've pretty much read the whole thing at this point and it has definitely helped me. Probably going to refer back to that book a few times because it's got a lot of this kind of stuff about things to do or not to do in games in general and patterns you see. Some of these patterns are kind of automatically implemented or We'll say they're implied so you're probably already doing them and we don't really need to talk about them but the ones that are a little more obscure or that you have to manually calculate and program in uh, we're definitely going to try to talk about so basically what you may do is you make a standard queue and this is a c plus plus thing and of course there is a reference for it uh, i would highly recommend the cpp reference on it basically a more simplified version of a vector it's less heavy than a vector about as efficient as it gets and you can only see the back or the front so it's a it's like a line basically which is essentially what a queue means so as you st put stuff on here usually you want to push back and then you process what's ever on the front and you pop front now also to use this you're going to need some kind of event class 
uh, or something that in general understands all the events of your game which can be you know that's kind of its own whole topic and maybe we can talk about that if you guys are interested in seeing more about something like an event class there's a lot of examples if you look at people's game engines of their event class and they can get pretty complicated on their own but in general it's just like a list of all the or a, a class that can handle any of the things that your engine could do and you put it on this queue and then you process them uh, one at a time and slowly rather than trying to smash them all in one tiny frame update and locking up your code so yeah let, let's let's make a little demo of one we're going to need to include a queue of course i open this in visual studio just to get a text file uh so i haven't actually set this up as a project this is totally example code all right so we need an event class or you could make this a struct or whatever but eventually essentially you want it to be some kind of event and you want this to be like things you're uh i'm trying to think of the best way to do this and it's really hard to like there's there's going to be stuff like all the different keys you could press all the different ui things that could happen and stuff like that and you could also use some some polymorphism or some inheritance to to make this a little more robust that gets really complicated i don't really want to get into that because then i'm going to start like teaching c plus plus and this will be four hours long so basically it'll be like uh things you could process so essentially what you do is you just make a queue of these events and of course this would not be in your main loop it would be somewhere else uh, and you would have events and as you do stuff maybe you press a key or something happens in the game and basically what you do is you add things to this event loop so yeah, it could happen as part of this update game state if like an AI is doing something that causes an event that needs to be triggered or if someone takes damage or if you run out of mana or whatever, something like that. Or if you press an input button and it needs to do something that that could go on the queue that could all add to this queue. So essentially what you do is once per update process it. So it would be like uh, events dot front and then you would process the thing so however it is depending on what it is maybe you have a function here that says like process or something like that all right so for now we're just going to put a process and uh, so this would essentially do whatever it needs to do in theory and what you would do is just once per update or once per whenever you're ready to process an event is you just take the front one you process it and then after you process you do a pop so it would remove it because it's done no longer needs to do anything you could could go even further with this and you could have like a you could store a boolean or a binary that says whether it's done or not start as false and then you could also as part of this process say uh, done equals true or something like that uh, i'm not doing lines here just because i'm being lazy then you could have more logic in here to say like if done uh, then remove it and if not so you could get you know you could get pretty you're pretty crazy with this is the point engineer it however it needs to be engineered for what you're doing in particular and also something that's sort of related is have a delayed update you could process this queue as part of your delayed update if you don't want them to happen too much or if they tend to happen too much or if some of them in general happen to be seem to be too heavy to do every frame your normal game state update or event tick or your game tick happens every single frame so it could happen 60 times per second or 144 times per second if if your computer can handle that but also you could have a delayed update so you could have you could hold the time so usually when i go to uh do this timing thing i usually just grab code instead of rethinking about the whole thing and of course i have it in my little ancient archer engine here which i work on uh, i have vlogs on that if you want to check it out it's also on github core at this point somewhere in here there is okay yeah here we go so in this it's uh it's right here so I have my while loop in as an update, render, pull events. So in my update, here is the stuff that keeps track of the time. Basically, I would grab uh, this code and then we can use this elapsed time, which will update every frame. Just some basic logic there to keep track of the time of the game. So what we can do, for example, uh, we would just we would hold another variable that says like time so far, static flow of time so far, started out as nothing of course, and then every frame we go time so far plus equals, which means we add to it the elapsed time, and then we would say if 
time so far is greater than the timeout length. And that means enough time has passed that we're good to go ahead and process something. Then maybe we want to do our event pop. Or maybe you just have some certain thing that only checks every half second or something like that. So you can customize this sort of thing to save frames because this basically means that rather than doing your whole thing every frame, the only thing you're going to do is add to the elapsed time and then time so far. And of course, once you process an event, you want to time it out again. So you want to set this time so far back to zero, like so. So once it processes, make sure you reset this time. Otherwise, it's just going to start doing it every frame. And uh, There's probably a ton more I could say about this particular thing, but it's a, a general concept that can make your games a lot faster and a lot more performant to just basically not do every single thing every frame and just delay some stuff. I guess I didn't really mention sound before, but I'll mention it now because a lot of times sound effects aren't critical to like the logic of the game, to things hit points, to know if it died this frame or to know if it, you know, got crowd controlled this frame or something like that. So you can often put your sound effects on this event queue and process it when you get time because no one's really going to know the difference if just a few milliseconds have passed. But if it becomes a problem, you might need to rethink the design. Like if you, uh, I don't know, swing your sword and you see the whole animation and then after you're done swinging, then you hear the whoosh, that's going to be awkward. But in general, that's probably not going to happen because you're going to be like only a tiny bit through the swing and then you're going to start hearing the whoosh and it'll sound fine. You don't necessarily need to play the sound the exact moment you hit the hotkey. Hmm. You know, that really is the biggest thing. Just controlling the flow of how things are working so that it doesn't get overloaded and lock up your frames. Now there's some other stuff, but it's kind of less critical, like you don't want to load the same textures over and over and the same models and the same vertices. So a lot of that can be controlled by basically just carefully analyzing things, but in reality, and I think for the most part, as far as loading things, it's usually a one-time thing. So it's not quite as important as the runtime unless you're loading and unloading during runtime, which you want to be careful about. Uh, one thing that kind of annoys me personally in games is when they put your character into the game and then they start loading stuff so that like you see like the skybox and nothing else for like minutes or something. Uh, I always feel like you should have some sort of loading screen while all that's going on. You can always like improve your asset loading a tiny bit, but in general it's not necessarily going to affect your runtime a lot unless it's something major so that's usually kind of an afterthought i think this should give you some ideas how you can improve the speed of your game and your code and make sure you're not doing anything too terribly slow that's going to ruin it for your players so let me know if you have questions let me know if you have more tips down below i'll be reading them and responding and maybe we'll do a part two if a bunch of stuff comes up all right thank you Goodbye.